school children is named in honor of Amerigo Vespucci for his discovery of the mainland of the New World. We tend not to question the general history of America. The notion that America was named for Vespucci has long been universally accepted. So much so that a lineal descendant of America Vespucci came to New Orleans in 1839 and asked for a land grant in recognition of her name and parentage. Since the late 19th century, however, conflicting ideas about the truth of the derivation have been set forth with profound cultural and political implications. Jules Marco, a prominent French-American geologist, who while studying North America, argued, 
as did other 19th century writers, that the name America was brought back to Europe from the New World, and that Vespucci had changed his name to reflect the name of his discovery. In his work titled, New Research on the Origin of the Name of America, and the Origin of the Name of America, that was published in the Atlantic Monthly of March 1875, Jules Marcoux wrote regarding the origin of the name America, in which he introduced the name of an American Indian tribe and of a district in Nicaragua called Amarique, and asserted that this district, rich in gold, had been visited by both Columbus and Vespucci, who then made this name known in Europe through the Marcoux's map. For both explorers, the words Amarique and gold became synonymous. Subsequently, according to Marcoux's account, Vespucci's authentic Christian name was Alberigo Vespucci, or Alberscus in Latin, in which he changed to Amerigo after his voyages to the Americas, meaning Amerigo came from America and not the other way around. In the book entitled The Romance of the Name America by Heinrich Charles, we find a most compelling fact, stating that Vespucci lived at the time of the greatest fervor and the absolute supremacy of Roman Catholic Christianity. Yet it is very interesting that we do not find not one of these names. Americus, Amersco, Amersgo, Amergo, Amer Eco, Almersgo, Alber Uyo, Aymerico, Morsgo, Damersko, Armenico, Umders, Aymeric, Almeric, or Amtric, within the nomenclature or the calendars of the Italian and Spanish saints. According to Marcuse's account, his claim can be verified from the archives of Toledo, where a letter from Vespucci to the Cardinal dated December 9, 1508, is signed Amarigo with a double R, as in the Indian Amarique. And between 1508 and 1512, the year in which Vespucci died, at least two other signatures with the Christian name Amarigo were recorded. It should be noted that prior to 1507, the date of the publication of the name Americus by Jean Basson at St. D, the name is not to be found in any printed document or in any manuscript document of recognized and unquestionable authenticity. These facts imply Vespucci being more of a crafty opportunist than an American hero worthy of glorification. In the mid-16th century, Bartholomew de las Casas had accused Vespucci of being a liar and a thief who stole the glory that belonged to Columbus. The new continent, insisted Las Casas, should have been called Columba, not as it is unjustly called America. In his epoch-making history of the Indies, Las Casas demeans Vespucci and his achievement, slandering his name by describing what he a friend of Columbus and his family considered the long premeditated plan of Vespucci to have the world falsely acknowledge him as the discoverer of the largest part of the Indies. There are many scholars, among them the present governor-elect of Georgia, the Honorable Joseph M. Brown, that have tried to prove that Vespucci changed his name so as to make it consonant with the word that was prevalent all over South and Central America. Governor Brown says in his work, entitled Astanax, an epic romance of Ilion, Atlantis, and Amaraca, that evidence seems to prove that Amerigo Vespucci, who in his first voyage with Ojeda was written as Morigo Vespucci, took his own name from the continent instead of the reverse. The name America was first applied to present-day Brazil, appearing for the first time on Martin Wolzemuller's 1507 world map, known as the Baptismal Certificate of the New World, and also America's Birth Certificate. The Wolzemuller's map of the world, on which 
the New World is boldly labeled America, is the first known map, printed or manuscript, to use the name America, as it clearly depicted a separate Western Hemisphere with the Pacific as a separate ocean. The entire New World portion of the map roughly represents South America, and when later map makers added North America, they retained the original name. In 1538, a great geographer, Gerard Mercator, gave the name America to all of the Western Hemisphere on his map of Mundi. Walter Mueller's 1507 map, lost to scholars until 1901, when it was found in a German castle, is now reckoned to be the first to show the name and the earliest record of its use. Jules Marco pointed to the name America being derived from an indigenous word originally applied to a range of mountains in Central America. It was the English geologist and naturalist Thomas Belt, in his book, The Naturalist in Nicaragua, 1874, who first indicated that the etymology of America came from the Amorisque range, an important source of gold in the early 16th century. The Nicaraguan archaeologist Jorge Espinosa also expressed that the Amorisques gave their name to the Western Hemisphere, although he based his thesis for the University of Louisiana on historical maps drawn by John Cabot in 1497, where the name Amorisque already appears five years before Christopher Columbus set foot in Nicaragua in 1502. Another claim invokes the Algonquian Indian word M. Erica as a possible source of origin. Strangely enough, the Amacanos or Americanos tribe is a synonym for the Yamasi or Jamasi, who are known also as the Amacaris. According to Ricardo Palma in his work entitled Peruvian Traditions of 1872, also expounded upon America's name being derived from the mountains of Amarique. Ricardo Palma further stated that the ending of the word America indicates this origin. The ending ik or ica, ike, and eco is found frequently in the names of places in the languages and native dialects of Central America and even of the Antilles, which seems to mean great, elevated, prominent, and is always applied to dividing ridges or to elevated mountainous countries, but not to volcanic regions. These words denoting the range in the rocks, Amorique, Amerique, or Amaric, are without a doubt indigenous words that have been perpetuated without alteration since the discovery of the New World by the complete isolation of the aboriginal Indians who lived throughout the American continent, who call their mountains by the same word today as they did in 1502, when Colombo visited them. And at the foot of these mountains lie the gold mines of Libertad and Santo Domingo. The Spanish Universal Illustrated Encyclopedia, 1907, gives Americ or America as a mountainous region in Nicaragua, adding that Columbus had landed on the coast of Nicaragua, directly east of these mountains. Columbus, who met the Indians of this coast, presumably heard the name Amarique from them, as he was looking for gold and the Indians gave him some, telling him he could get more to the west in the mountains there. Ricardo Palma claimed that the name America circulated by oral tradition among the men of Columbus. In his account, Colombo does indeed state that the Indians named several localities rich in gold, making it highly probable that the name Americ or Amarique was often pronounced by the Indians in answer to the pressing demands of the Europeans of the expedition. The eagerness for gold was such among the first navigators that it formed their chief preoccupation everywhere, and it is almost certain that to their continual questions as to the place where the gold was found, that the Indians wore his ornaments, the reply would be from Amory, this word signifying the most elevated 
and conspicuous part of the interior, the upper country, the distinguishing feature of the province of Siamba. With these facts, we may suppose that Colombo and his companions on their return to Europe, when relating their adventures, would boast of the rich gold mines they had discovered through the Indians of Nicaragua. They lay in the direction of Amerit. This would make popular the word Amerit, as the common designation of that part of the Indies in which the richest mines of gold in the New World were situated. Eventually, the word Amerit, a synonym for this golden country, would become known in the seaports of the West Indies and then in those of Europe, and would gradually penetrate into the interior of the continent, so that printers and booksellers, such as Gene Batson, would have heard the word Amerik without understanding its true meaning as an indigenous Indian word, but would become acquainted with it in conversations about these famous discoveries, as designating a country in the New Indies very rich in mines of gold. In determining the source of the name of America, Jules Marcoux also references the work of anthropologist Augustus Le Plongion, who studied the Mayan culture in Yucatan, in which he stated that the name America, or Amarique in the Mayan language, means a country of perpetually strong wind, or the land of the wind, and sometimes the suffix Ike and Ica can mean not only wind or air, but also a spirit that breathes life itself. It should also be noted that the present Venezuela, where Vespucci landed first on the South American continent, was called in those days Amaraca Pana. In Central America, where he touched on his first journey in the present Honduras, and where the chain of mountains called the Amariques is located, which were peopled by the Amarique Indians. The capital of the Cuchas was Ua Amaraca, where cross worship by the people was named Amarau. The headgear of the high priest of the kingdom of Kundin Amaraca, which lies below Maraca Ibo, was adorned with this emblem. Down the Venezuelan coast were the towns of Maraca, Maraque, and Imaraca. The Orinoco was called Maracuaca and the Amazon Maranon. Through the region of Guyana flowed rivers called Amaruco, Muruga, Maraca, Marica, Maranca, Maracay, Maricio, Marisuan, and the mountains Maraca, Maruki, and Murakai. The caziques of Amaraca believe themselves to be the descendants of the Amaraca race. Even the home of the Incas in the neighborhood of the Titicaca Sea was called Amiraca. Pizarro reported to the Emperor Charles V that he kept the Inca Huascar a prisoner in the fortified palace, and Amaraca and this ruler, who had a golden palace, Amara, died later in the hot springs of Car Amaraca. Can be of no coincidence. Names so similar in sound and significance to America was so prevalent all over the central and southern part of the continent centuries before the landfall of European discoverers. These facts only add more luster to the replendency of the name of America. The meaning of America goes beyond the textbook or mainstream definition. Embedded within the very structure of the word are the contents of the literal, symbolic, metaphysical, and esoteric dimensions of what the word actually means. Sacred etymology is an approach to derive the meaning of a word through an unconventional interdisciplinary analysis of the word structure. In searching for the meaning of the word, America, we will arrange the word in different ways, without changing the spelling or sequential order of the letters, and garner definitions based upon the combined meaning of those arrangements. The word America and its derivatives provide
provide clues to how the implementation of the sacred etymological analysis will reveal deeper truths regarding its origins. A particular derivative of America can be found associated with Dutch mapmaker and publisher Peter van der Ah, who printed pirated editions of foreign bestsellers and illustrated books, but is best known for his voluminous output of maps and atlases, and presented a fascinating map of the southeastern part of the future United States, based largely upon Sanson's map of Florida from 1657. The map was intended to illustrate the expedition of Ferdinand de Soto in 1534, based upon his original accounts. Strangely, the map labels this region's inhabitants as T. Americans, which eerily resembles ancient Egyptian, though it is Dutch. The word T. American seems to correspond with the ancient Egyptian Ta Meri, which is one of the various names ascribed to the Kemetic civilization, meaning the beloved land. In ancient Egypt, Meri by itself, or attached to other words, denoted a sense of elevated status. For instance, Meri Ka Ri means the beloved of the Ka of Ri, or the Ka of Ri is love. The Ka ending of America, or the Ka ending of America, is equivalent to the ancient Egyptian Ka. The letters C and K are interchangeable, for C sometimes carries the same sound as K. The ancient Egyptian Ka is the creative life energy or spirit that inhabits a body during life and can survive through death via mummification or by substitution of Ka statues for its survival. When utilizing the sacred etymological method in combining the meanings of the three parts of A, uh, Mary, Ka, the meaning derived is the beloved eternal spirit or the eternal spirit that is love. Mark Amaru Pinkham, in his book entitled The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom, tells of the descendants of the Andean elders, who speak of the entire American landmass, anciently known as Amaraka, the land of the immortals, or the land of the wise serpents. The title Amaraka is derived from the Kuchuan word Amaru, meaning snake or serpent, apparently echoing the recollections of the Andean elders. H.P. Blavatsky maintains in her book, The Secret Doctrine, that America is referred to in the Hindu Puranas legends as Potala, the kingdom of the Nagas, meaning serpents. Quoting the book Secret Doctrine by H.P. Blavatsky, it states that worship of the dragon or serpent and the sun were universal on the earth plane. In fact, the worship of the serpent gods may be one of the oldest traditions on earth. The tradition of the dragon and the sun is echoed in every part of the world. There was a time when the four parts of the world were covered with a temple sacred to the sun and the dragon. But the cult is now preserved mostly in China and the Buddhist countries. The dragon, however, is not the middle-aged concept of a beast with wings breathing fire, but is, in reality, a snake. In the Amazon regions, the serpent god was called Amarak. The Brazilians worshipped the god Tamaraga, and the word Amaraka was closely connected with the religions of the Incas and Mayas. Throughout the entire region, reaching from Panama to the Rio de la Plata, the American Aborigines used a sacred rattle everywhere called Maraca. In fact, the word Amaraca occurs again and again all over South America, appearing to always be associated with some mystical deity and with some stupendous achievement which can only have been created by strenuous and mighty labor, like a great river, a gulf, or a chain of mountains. The rites and ceremonies of the Muscas informs us that when anyone died from the bite of a snake, that the sign of the cross was placed on the tomb, which is the American Peruvian sign for the word Amaru. And with the addition of the word 
America or land represents the sacred national name America. 